Hello and welcome. This is Ghost Dimension Flying Solo. Coming up on Ghost Dimension. That was one of these doors already. Oh, I just heard a thud above me. Look at that. There we go, there we go. Was that you? This is going mental. This is the oldest original pub in England, Ye Old Bull's Head in Middleton, Manchester. Tree ring dating confirms that this building dates back to 1622, when it first operated as an alehouse, which makes this the oldest public house in England. Built from wooden timbers and old wattle and daub, this is one of the finest examples of this style of building in the country. It is believed that the infamous highwayman Dick Turpin stayed here on many occasions, looking for people to rob as he roamed the English countryside on his faithful horse, Black Bess. This building has had many uses during its time and in this very room it was once used as a courthouse, sentencing people to their death. There's also holding cells in this very building and what's believed to be a dungeon. Reports say that some of the prisoners were treated very badly and some of them actually died before they received the judgment that awaited them. There are many different reports of paranormal activity here with people witnessing shadows, hearing footsteps and objects moving before their very eyes. There has also been the foul stench of rotten body odour smelt on occasion. Let's hear from our psychic medium in Oklahoma, Para, to hear what she senses could be haunting ye old boar's head. Hey, it's Para, and Sean sent me more photographs from the ye old boar's head in Milton which is apparently two minute walk away from the Ring of Bells. The first thing I picked up is a portal there. Now there are three different types of portals. There's an output portal, a portal that swings both ways, and then there's just a receiving portal. Now a receiving portal is for spirits to leave our plane and go to a better plane or a different plane. <laughs> Usually crossing, crossing over kind of thing. Now, usually mediums open those portals or somebody with high spiritual powers open those portals. That portal hasn't been open for very long. I'm going to say like two, two, three weeks. Um, what happened is there were thousands of spirits that flooded that location last night um, or they've been there for a while, but I did the reading last night. Thousands of spirits have flooded into that location from what I believe to be an unmarked mass grave or a cemetery. I'm leaning towards the unmarked grave because none of them could tell me their name. They all seemed confused of where they were at. They're all lost and most of the time spirits from cemeteries, most of the time, spirits from cemeteries know that they're dead or they know that they're buried um, in, in their graves. They have tombstones. There were, they all seemed to be from the same time period. There were children, there was men, there was women. They, they all kind of bombarded me um, asking me for help and I, I couldn't help them. <laughs> they, they kind of overwhelmed me so much that when I actually tried to go to sleep after doing this reading that they were infecting um, my dreams and I could still see them. I think I may have closed the receiving portal um, by accident because I feel physically drained. I've, I've closed many portals before but never a receiving portal and I feel like I feel like my energy has been 
uh, drained from me and that's usually how I feel after I close portals. Now the spirits that um, flooded this location couldn't use that receiving portal in order for them to move on. Um, I do believe that maybe certain rules or parameters may have been set for this portal or maybe this portal was meant for one spirit alone because they cannot use it. They are stuck. Um, I do not know if the spirits are going to remain in this location or if they'll go back, but they were drawn to this portal like a beacon. It was like a big giant beacon. When I tried to do a reading this morning and reconnect with this location, I did not feel any spiritual activity. Now, they may come back. They may come back and visit this place at night because that's when the portal was opened at nighttime. But as of right now, I'm not feeling any spiritual activity. They could be hiding as well, but I'm not picking up anything. They may have gone back to their grave or graves or whatever. Um, other than that, that's all I could find uh, from this location was the portal that was opened and all of the spirits that flooded it. Hopefully everything's okay. <laughs> That's all I found from the old boar's head in Middleton. This location appears to be a hive of activity and do you know what? I can't wait to get started. So join me as I enter the ghost dimension. Paul, the old boar's head. Yes. Amazing location. Mm. For me, we've walked here, we've come here. In fact, it's only around the corner from the Ringer Bells, which we did a few weeks back. Yeah. This place is in a haunted area. And when I've come inside of this building, instantaneously, I can feel its presence pushing against you. Right. You can tell it's got an atmosphere about it. There's definitely something. I mean, again, it's one of the, it's the oldest original pub in, in England, uh, not far from the Ring of Bells, very close to a park, which um, is where they used to execute people, used to hang them. Yep. So from here, where they, they held court yep. and were detained in the cells, some people didn't, didn't make it off to anywhere else. They were taken over there and then strung up until they were dead. So a lot of trauma that could have potentially happened in this building. And this place has got a lot of things about it. It's got, like you say, the history. Yeah. It's had a courthouse here. Yeah. It's got a dungeon. It's a nice twist, isn't it? And parts of the bar, which are, is now a bar, was actually cells. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's still uh, evidence of that because the bars are there. Um, the, the area which uh, they think was a dungeon um, kind of is in keeping with the fact that they had the court there, so if the cells were overflowing, put them down in the dungeon. Should we go down to the dungeon now? I think we should have a look at it, yeah. Come on. Okay. Paul. Yes. The dungeon. I, you know, come down here, again, it's weird, it's a lot quieter. Yeah. And it feels damp. It feels <laughs> heavy. Yeah. And like you say, it's got this odd feel about it. Yeah. Um, the, the heaviness sometimes, I think, can be a bit psychological. Yeah. You go underground, you start feeling a little bit claustrophobic, so not necessarily something that you could say is paranormal. No. But... Who knows? Who knows, you know. But, I mean, um, yes, this, this is what they say uh, was a dungeon. Mm. We don't know for certain. No. Um, but looking at the back wall and the way the, the brickwork is uh, configured certainly looks like it's with the, the right time period. Then you've got the iron girders here, which have obviously supported the, the new floor. Brought in to support, yeah. Yeah, um, but I mean, it, it certainly could possibly have been a dungeon. It could have, Paul, and in the back wall, there's also um, holes which lead into another part of this basement, which has been bricked up, and the owners believe they are tunnels. Yeah. Or an extension of this dungeon. Yeah. And maybe people were held here. Yeah, well, quite possibly. I mean, the, the cells that we know upstairs, um, once you get to, to capacity, we've got to go somewhere else. Go we don't somewhere. know how many people would have been held. You could put the nasty people, you know, this is what people did. They put mm. the nasty people yeah. away, lock them away in the cellars, in the dungeons. Yeah. Potentially, people may have lost their lives down here, Paul. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. It's, that's definitely a possibility. Um, and the thing with, um, just going back to the tunnels as well, 
back in the olden days a lot of pubs used to have tunnels which would lead to churches um, because what they used to do was put bodies in cold storage yeah waiting for them to be interred so um you know we, there could have been a tunnel that connected to a church for that purpose and there's a church and locally here yes. so we don't know maybe paul no the tunnels lead to the church yeah and the, with the the fact that this goes back so far there's not accurate records we just don't know we don't and not um you know you'd have building plans but not necessarily secret tunnels because wouldn't be secret if it was on a plan. <laughs> like, I can't wait to come down into here mm. and investigate yeah. and see if anything that happens um, down here that the staff have reported that they've felt feelings of negative presences, some of the staff won't stay here. Yeah, I was just longer than say, 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. And it was quite interesting as well. Some of the staff that we've spoken to didn't even know it existed. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't know it existed if no. you didn't know where it was. That's it. There's no reason for people to come down here because there's no beer kegs or anything stored here. So, you know, it is a secret little area for, for people to, you know, find out about like us. But another interesting area for mm. us to investigate tonight. I'm looking forward to this one. I can't wait. Yeah. The Sam Bamford room. Yeah. Now, this pub's got many rooms and it's split up into different things, which is going to be fantastic for our loan vigils. Yeah, I think so. This Sam Bamford, this guy was a poet, mm -hmm. and he's quite uh, infamous in Middleton. In this room, people have heard taps and yeah. bangs. There's no explanation of why that activity's happened, yeah. but it's happened. Yeah. You know, and tonight, I think on our investigation, hopefully we should be capturing that, and if we can encourage that to happen, maybe that'll happen for us. Yeah, and I think in here, um, we should try the Alice box. The Alice Box? Yeah, because um, he was obviously a man of words. Maybe he'll speak for the Alice Box. Exactly. So, uh, you know, it would be nice to actually try and personalise this individual, yeah. uh, find out if it is him and see if he'll write us something of interest on the Alice Box. It'd be even more interesting if he wrote a poem. It would. You never know, Bob. No, I'm just, just wondering how we go about copywriting that. Well, you know what? If it happens on Ghost Dimension, it stays on Ghost Dimension. <laughs> it's ours. It's ours. So if the spirit does it, you know, it is ours and we look operate it, but we'll play it for you at home. Yeah. No, honestly, jokes aside, if it mm. does happen, it'd be interesting to see if that does happen. Absolutely, yeah. You know? It would be nice um, to, to find he's here. Um, although there haven't been a great deal of reports that it is him. There is, however, a photograph, which yes. I showed you earlier on. Um, which I'm sure we'll be able to show uh, and it shows an individual just outside uh, the pub taken sometime in the 1870s and he looks like him it looks very much like him but the trick is he's quite transparent yeah. compared to everybody else so again it would be nice to see the negative to that and that's probably never going to happen but it could possibly be him well you know what it all leads to me for high expectations from this location with the activity that's reported from the people that work here yeah. to what could happen tonight, mm -hmm. I think we should get started. I think, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Let's do it, Pop, come on. We can only but hope tonight during our investigation of the ye old bull's head, we experience its haunted hospitality. Before we start, I meet Jack, the marketing manager, to hear what he has experienced at this location. Jack. Hello. Welcome to Ghost Dimension Flying Solo. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us here. This building is fantastic and I love how old this building is. It's 16th century, if not earlier, and that's one of the first recorded you know, drinks that's happened here. Now you work here, you're a marketing manager for the pub. Have you ever experienced anything paranormal here? There's, there's been a, a few occasions where earlier this year, we, uh, well, I was in the kitchen and it was, it was on a Monday or a Tuesday and there was, there was nobody really about. And I was just stood there, it was pretty quiet and you know, a load of plates came just smashing off uh, one of the shelves. There's, there's been a few things that have been heard by different customers and stuff, but you know, I, what, one time yeah. I uh, taunted a ghost right. with, with my little brother who used to work here and uh, we went upstairs into the office and we was like, come on ghost, show us, you know, we, we'd had a few beers, yep. it, it'd been a you know, good night and uh, 
The day after, <laughs> uh, after taunting this ghost, we, we got held up in an armed robbery. Seriously? Yeah. yeah, so me and my brother, so I don't know if that's got anything to do with so, it. You know, but <laughs> potentially, yeah. right, I'm going to get you back and yeah. it's all to happen. So, uh, you know, there's, people see things all the time and I can be on my own and there's always something in the corner of your eye. Yeah. Now, there's an, a couple of um, reports I was hearing from the locals in uh, the uh, pub as I was looking around before, and one of them was in the female toilet. This is apparently a child, a female spirit of a girl in there. Are you aware of that? I've, I've heard rumours. I mean, there's obviously always a lot of interest with people who want to come and do different things in here and, and stuff like that. And there's been a few reports of uh, a young child in, in the toilets there, the toilet box. Wow. Okay. And have you experienced anything else paranormal in this building? I lived here. I lived here for a short time. Leanne, who is the licensee, uh, she, she let me stay here for six months or so. And, you know, I, I had some real trippy nights. Yeah. You know, hot, sweaty, couldn't sleep, restless. And it, it was awful. Horrible feeling. I've never felt anywhere. Uh, and it's only since you came here? Yeah, well, that, when, I, when I lived here, when I, when I was sleeping in the room upstairs, it was a, it was a restless and horrible sleep, uh, you know, feeling like there was someone there. And I, you get it all the time. I'm here on my own at all sorts of hours, and you'll just look and take a second glance, and you'll be like, you know, Was that so, out the corner of my eye, or was it there? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I can't wait tonight to investigate this location and see if anything does happen. Maybe you will hear something. Maybe we'll see something out the corner of our eye. But also later, potentially, we'll do a seance together. And I'd like to, because you've had experiences in here, to invite you into that seance and see if anything happens when you're there. Because maybe the spirit's energy, if they're making those feelings on you upstairs, hot and sweaty and, what, and whatnot, maybe they'll follow you and come and join us in the uh, seance. Would you be up for doing a seance with us? Of course. Excellent. Well, then, do you know what? I think it's about time we get started our investigation. Okay, so I've come to the ladies' toilet. This is where one of the reports of activity has happened, and apparently it is the spirit of a little girl who has been seen in here quite regularly. So hopefully she'll be in here tonight. Inside um, the toilet, I'm gonna leave the lights on, but I've got a KT meter here. I've got three empty toilets, and maybe, can we just get one of the spirits in here to interact or maybe the girl will come forward and she'll speak to me I don't know I don't spend many you know many investigations in a female toilet however this is the first for me and hopefully me being a male inside a female's toilet may get them to come out we don't know but it could happen that was one of these doors That was one of these doors already. The lights are still on, it's, you know, I'm leaving them on purposely, but that was one of these doors. Are you here with me now? Can you move one of these doors behind me? Move a door. Close one of these toilet doors. I am now in what is known as the dungeon at the Old Boar's Head in Middleton <clears throat> and the speculation is that once upon a time when a court was being held here uh, this might have been used as a dungeon for prisoners so we don't know for absolute certain that that's what it was used for but I can't see why it couldn't be if it wish that was the use somebody wanted to have of it. We have a rem just over there, we have a rem just over there and we have the periscope there which will tell me if there's any static build up in here if anything decides to come and pay me a visit so we're going to call out to see if I can find anybody to come and talk to me. I've got a meter in my hand, it's called a K2 meter. If you come towards me 
This meter will light up and it's got different coloured lights. So if you're a child, come towards this meter and I will do my best to communicate with you and interact with you and try and work out who you are and what's happening. So just come forward to this little light in my hand and touch it or play with it, move it, make it flash. Are you here with me now? That sounded like it was outside. Well, I'll show you, I'll show you. There's nobody here. Completely empty. I mean, here's the men's. I know, like, surprising me. I'll show you actually. It's a bit of smell, but there's nobody here. That was really, really weird. Okay, if that was you and you made that noise, come towards me and light this meter up, please. I'm here to communicate with you. My name's Sean and I'm a paranormal investigator. Can you use your voice and communicate with me? No. I swear I heard somebody. Come forward. Speak to me. Nothing on the uh, periscope. For anybody here, somebody just make a a sound? Did you breathe out? Did you grunt? Oh, just heard a thud above me. Oh, footsteps. Wow. I bet you can hear that, because I can. There's nobody else here, right now, that's above me. Sometimes, when you're investigating, it can take a while before the activity starts to build. And I think that's the case here. I think it's trying to build. The energy's mustering itself up, and it will happen. But I think right now it's building, because it's... What's that? I heard something then. I don't know what it was. But I heard it. Was that you? Was you making a noise then? Come and speak to me, come and communicate with me. Come towards this meter I have in my hand and touch it. Copy this whistle. harm, no disrespect. And like I said before, I'm not here to judge you. Whatever you did in your life is of no consequence now. Is there anybody at all? I just step back then because you know when you get something out the corner of your eye. I know I'm casting a shadow through this, but I just thought there was a shadow be beside my shadow. So, I don't know. You, you may be able to see my shadow, I don't know, but I can see it on the wall and I just thought I saw another one. Could be my eyes playing tricks. Not entirely certain, so I'm not going to jump up and down and say it was. If there's somebody there, somebody behind me, can you go towards this red light on the floor? Touch that metal stick that's coming from it. It doesn't harm you. It's just going to let me know that you're there. Use your voice. Communicate with me.
Was that you? That was faint. That was a faint tap. That was twice. Can you can you tap twice if you're a girl and once if you're a boy? Thank you. Are you the are you the spirit girl that people have seen in here? One tap for yes, two taps for no. Are you the spirit girl people have seen in here? That's coming from the toilet, that is. Let's see if I can get a read. No. 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 No reading. Where are you? Give me a sign. Where are you? Is that, I heard that then. I'm, trying, I'm hearing the subtle bangs and taps and knocks. But I'm not finding where this girl is. Oh, got an idea. Okay, there's me in the mirror. Come forward and communicate with me. Use my energy and come and speak to me. Appear behind me in this mirror. Show yourself in this mirror. Appear behind me. Are you able to communicate? With your voice. You tap before, you tap before, but you haven't yet communicated with your voice. Use your voice. Speak to me. I don't know if it's my eyes playing tricks on me, whether I'm seeing a double shadow off the reflection of the screen. There we go, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. I knew, I knew I'd just seen a shadow. I knew over there there was a shadow and now both the REMs just went off. First the one that's near the wall and then the one at the stairs. Something is or was down here with me then. Thank you for that. That's exactly what I asked you to do, to let me know. That is really good. What did I just see behind me then? I just thought through the viewfinder, through the screen, there was some shadow behind me again. If you're down here, that is really, really good. Just got the, yeah, the old goosebumps. That was really good. Thank you so much for that. And I know I'm going to be asking a lot, but could you do it again for me? Could you set them off again? The activity was increasing, and with Paul receiving REM pod responses, and with me experiencing intelligent knocks in the female toilets, we move on to investigate even more. Okay, so I've come into the Sam Bamford room. I'll show you the room, okay? It's a room about where the poet was, and this room has seen many things over its time. I've got a, a REM pod here. I'll set the REM pod off. And I've got another REM pod over here, um, which I'll put over there. I've also got the Alice box, set magnet already. And I've got the ion detector, which will light up red for negative energy or green for a positive energy and it just lit up then but I don't know if that was just a little uh, test anything comes near the REM pods they'll set off and make a noise what I'll also do is I'll close this door hopefully you can see it and I'll lock myself into this room and then if I hear anything it should be locked into here this is the first floor of the uh, Yield Boar's Head and 
this is where it's out of bounds, I think, to the public. So I think it's used for, well, looking at it, storage. Oh, we've got a ram just over by the window and a ram just on the table there. Incredibly creaky floorboards. Uh, I've also got the ovalus with me, so I'm just going to see what happens in here. There is um, just over there, there is a perspex sheet that's covering some original signatures from people dating back to the late 1600s, early 1700s. Um, people have just signed the name and put the date on. So even back then graffiti seems to have been in. Okay, if there's any spirits in this room, can you come forward and communicate with me? Make a sound, a noise, give me an indication of your presence. But I've got a lot of equipment in here and you can come and light one of these meters. You can um, puddle the, uh, I didn't mean to say puddle, the, uh, but the uh, Alice box said puddle. I've got this device here and if you walk towards me it'll light up and change colour. All you've got to do is come towards me and use my auric energy, my atmospherical energy and change it around my body, change my temperature, come towards me and communicate with me. Let me know you are here. Are you outside? If I open this door, I'll go outside into the bar area. Are you here? Tense. It's so tense. Look. Oh, just probably caught the end of that. Rocks. It's rocks. Okay, God knows what that means. But it said that. I think I've just zoomed in a bit too close, but this flashed. I'm going to take you into the bar area. Let me show you the bar. So we've got all of the drinks and stuff like that. We've got this area down here where they serve all the food. And we've got a tap, tap, tap over there, which is weird. I'll investigate that. In a sec. Ooh, okay, you can see that flashing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we're onto somebody here. <gasps> flashing green and red. Now, let me just, I mean, this machine's off. Oh, thank you. Are you here? Can you come towards me again and light this up? Light my meter. Shall I walk? Am I getting close to you? This is flashing. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is flashing, indicating that something's nearby. And as you can see, I'm walking back and forward into the same area, and now it's stopped, which means the baseline is not constant. I've flashed again. <clears throat> what I want to do is try and find out who's here. Find out if you lived here drank here, fought here, would... What the hell was that? That was... That sounded like a... You know, if you put buttons in a jar and shake the jar, it sounded like that. Odd sound. I can't say I've heard that one before. Were you tried here when it was a court. Were you found guilty? Were you taken from this place and hung by the neck until you were dead? Please talk to me. Let me know you're here if you can. I don't think even a ninja could sneak around in here. Give me a sound as well. Follow me around and let, let's walk towards the cells to the courtroom. Ooh, okay. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about. Was you tried here? Oh, I stayed lit. Were you tried here? 
I just need to go back to the Alice box. This is amazing. Sound. It said sound and this is still going mad. Were you tried here? Were you hung? Was your life committed to death here? Light this right up if you can. Stay lit. Thank you for doing what you're doing so far. Jesus. I've sure heard a bang now. And then as the bang happened. <gasps> Look. Look at that. Red, green, green, red. In that sequence. Can you do that again for me now? Light it back up in that sequence again. Please, that was fantastic what you did. Do you know when you can hear a noise and you think to yourself, is there anything there? Look, there's the Sam Bamford room. I'm gonna go back in. I'm sure I heard the Alice box going off. Property. Property. I've just gone rather dizzy. Oh, that was weird. Just the whole. Ooh. Everything's just spam. That was weird. The only way I can describe it, you know, when you. At school, glance. Hmm. I was going to say, you know, when you were at school and people used to spin you round and round and round on the spot, and then you had to try and walk a straight line. Well, that was the kind of sensation I just, I just got then. M amuse. <laughs> okay. Did you find that funny? Did you just do something then? Ooh. I feel really out of it. D. That's the initial D. What are you trying to tell me? This is going off again. Shape. I said shape. The Alice box said she. And this is gone mad. Every time I walk to the courtroom, this is going mental. Oh, tap, tap, tap. And look, it's lit right up. Tap, tap, tap from the bar. And now it's just gone red. This was at the bar. Tap, tap, tap. Are you here? Make this flash again if you're here. <gasps> Thank you. Tap again. Thank you. No way. It's flashing. Right there. Right now. And it's happening. On Ghost Dimension Flying Solo. Activity is mental. If that was you, behind the bar, come towards me and flash this device. Oh, I heard that. Let's go and find that. That was behind there. That was at the bar. Look, as I'm moving, it's going mad. What the hell? Tap, 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 tap. Light up both, and then green and red again, followed by tap tap. Can you do that again? Light it up. 
Never have I ever seen so much activity on this meter. Just feel really drained. It's taking me all my time not to just go forward and collapse. Just don't feel like it's not feel right. The spirits appeared to have affected Paul. So when he came round, he took a break and he was okay. What else will happen tonight? Paul, what an amazing night so far. I can't believe the level of activity that we've had here. We've, it's been quite varied with knocks and bangs and, and whatnot, but so far, so good. Mm. How are you feeling about it? It's, it's good, I mean, you know, we, we never know what's gonna happen. We can't guarantee anything, but we do so well capturing some of the stuff that's been reported. Uh, and so far, so good. So far, so good. Yeah. For me, this building, with it being so old, with so much history behind it, and especially again, this room being a courtroom, yeah. there's bound to be something that still lurks here, either residual or maybe active, yeah. and that's what could be causing the paranormal activity yeah. that people experience here. And do you know what? I can't wait to investigate even more I'm with you completely on that, so shall we? Let's do it. Okay, so I've come into the uh, courtroom, what was used as a courtroom. I'm just going to shut this door fully and I'll show you. It's pretty hard to see on the night vision. I'll, what I'll do first of all, I'll just light it up so you can actually see what I'm seeing in here, which is a beautiful, beautiful. I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep that on a bit actually so you can see what's happening here. Here we go. So it's a beautiful, beautiful room with an old fireplace and this is where people were tried, they were sentenced here and potentially sent over to the church and hung in the gallows. So you know there should be a lot of spirit presences still around hopefully haunting this part and as I'm explaining that, there's rattling going on and it seems to come from the wall over here. What I have got in this room, I'll show you what I've got. I've got the REM pod over there. I've got a REM pod on the table here. And I've also got the... That was over there, by the door. I've got the ovulus, so I'm going to ask the spirits if that was them um, that was making that noise just then, because I definitely heard something happen then. Okay, so we're in the dungeon, and again I've got Jack and Leanne just over there, and had some good stuff down here before with that shadow in the room, so we're just going to see if uh, anything wants to come and say hello now. Is the person that was here before with me, here now? Can you make a noise? Can you set one of the devices off on the floor like you did before? I want to know if this used to be a prison. Can you answer that question for us? Was this used as a dungeon? Are you here with me now? Can you make a noise? A tap? A bang? I can hear footsteps. Listen. Can you do that again if that was you? Walk on the floor. I swear, I heard footsteps. The bar's empty, and I can still hear noises. 
Can you come towards this machine I have over here? It's called Donobulus. If you come towards it, you should be able to manipulate it and communicate with it. Thank you. Between. So I asked the obelisk to come and communicate and it said between. I don't know if maybe that was a spirit coming near me and it said something else. Initial. Are you going to give me your initial? Are you going to communicate with me and tell me who you are and give me your initials? Can you make another noise in this room? I know you were making noises before, but please make another noise and give me an indication of your presence here with me now. Tell us what it is that uh, you're feeling now. Same as upstairs, like grab another hairs, but on my left arm this time, it's my right arm upstairs. Is it Leanne that you're interested in? Why are you drawn to her? The obelisk said thing. I don't know if it's trying to say to me, what is this thing you've got here or what? Or if it's just randomly spitting these words out. But you know what? I asked for it to manipulate the obelisk and it sure is doing that right now. Oh, no way. Rem. <clears throat> the rem, and I grabbed the obelisk. It said foliage, but the rem's gone off. Thank you. No way. Thank you for giving me your indication you're here. Let's put that down. So, I'm just going to zoom out. The, the obvious went foliage. Why? Who knows? Well, the REM pod, the REM went off. On camera, you can see it. I'm here, and the obvious goes off. There's only one reason for that obvious to go off right over there. And that is a spiritual indication. There's no electric over there. There's no interference over there. That has to be a spirit manifestation next to the ovulus. Uh, not to the ovulus, the REM pod. Um, so there has to be a spiritual manifestation. And that was an orb. There was an orb. This is so much happening right now. I saw a light, an orb. And the ovulus has just said, descend again. So something went near that REM pod. It's still kicking off right now. What a fantastic night here. I can't believe the level of activity that's here. It's, it comes in like, like bursts mm -hmm. and it goes, I'm quiet, then it bursts at you. It bursts, yeah. bang, bang, bang. Yeah. And we've done lone vigils all over the place yeah. and experienced different things. You've yeah. had the licensee, the landlady, mm. and the marketing guy downstairs, Jack, yeah. and Leanne experiencing things as well yeah yeah Liam was getting uh, the hairs on her arms being pulled uh, started up in the, the Dick Turpin's room yeah uh, on her right arm and then when we got into the cellar it was on her left arm so that was on both arms yeah yeah so I think uh, you know she's got a fan and we've had REM pod activity we've had Alice box activity yeah the ovulus has been chatting away as well the ovulus has been chatting away. Yeah. and some of the responses on the Alice box have actually matched what's happened yeah yeah, I think that's a, a really underrated piece of kit um, because, you know, it doesn't just give you one word, it will give you sentences. Yeah. Uh, and I find sometimes it's more accurate than the obelisk, you know, more relevant to where we're doing. Um, so I'm glad the Alice box has, has proved it's worth tonight. Well, I took the ion detector around the building. Yeah. And when I took it around, you know what it's like, but it doesn't always go off. It and shouldn't. especially go into red. Well, yeah, it shouldn't, you know. So, I mean, it's uh, you, you want it. To, to hit that pocket of static, yep. you know, um, and it's negative or positive. So but if it's it gone to the red, it was following me around, and it was good for me to experience that yeah. on demand as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, if the thing is, I mean, if something's you know felt attracted to you for whatever reason, then that's what you know it's going to be registered. And obviously, you've had a fan as well tonight. Well, what an amazing night this has been. It has, yeah. One of the best investigations we've done so far, yeah. and the level of activity has been amazing. So, yeah. so far, fantastic. So, from Ghost Dimension Flying Solo, thank you for watching, and good night.